One of the most vindictive and power-hungry COVID tyrants suddenly reversed his stance on shutting down businesses. We simply cannot stay closed until the vaccine hits critical mass. The cost is too high. We will have nothing left to open. Wait a second. Isn't that what we've been saying since, I don't know, last May? You're going to destroy your city and state? Days after Cuomo's about face, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot made the exact same announcement. I want to get our restaurants and our bars reopened as quickly as possible. They've gone above and beyond to put in mitigation controls inside of the restaurants. They are going to be one of the safer places. Wait a second. I think we were criticized for saying that exact same thing by all the fancy people in the media. How weird is this change of heart? And it's coming right before Biden comes into office. Joining me now, Phil Kirpin, president of the Committee to Unleash Prosperity. Phil, you and I on this show, I don't know how many times we talked about this. The restaurants aren't spreading the virus. The schools aren't spreading the virus. Open up, wash your hands, and use some common sense. Now, they're suddenly sounding like us. What's going on? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, there was another one today. Uh, Ralph Northam today said, we know schools are safe. We need to open the schools. Oh. Uh, it basically... Everyone who we've been fighting for the last year, for what seems like forever, Laura, on this stuff, uh, suddenly they're saying the same things we've been saying all along and saying, oh, well, no, actually, uh, we need to open things up. And honestly, I can't see a single thing that has changed uh, other than the political context. Well, Joe Biden uh, comes in and he has a 100-day mask mandate. That was, that was a big part of it. He said there are going to be 100 million. I don't know his obsession with the 100 thing, but 100 days... 100 million, it's kind of his branding thing. Why not 125 million? I don't know. 100 million vaccine doses. Is there any sense that they're really going to be able to do it any better than has been done already? Isn't it, isn't it skepticism from some quarters, including healthcare workers, about the vaccine itself? Well, look, the vaccine rollout is not going nearly as well as it should be, especially in some very big, very liberal states like New York and California that have been total disasters on vaccine rollout. It's going a lot better in places like Florida and Texas. And uh, remarkably, the best state for vaccine rollout is West Virginia, which I don't think a lot of coastal elites would have predicted. Uh, but they've vaccinated every nursing home resident in the state of West Virginia, and they've already done over 12 percent of all of the seniors in the state of West Virginia. And they did that, Laura, by opting out out of the federal program. They did not use CVS and Walgreens in the federal program. Instead, they used all of their local pharmacies, all of the independent pharmacies, and they were able to assign a pharmacy to each nursing home. In the federal program, each CVS and Walgreens has about 25 nursing homes, and that's why it's been so slow to roll out. And so I think the problem is we have too much federal involvement, federal leadership, bureaucracy, uh, not too little. And I really worry that Biden's going to layer even more on. Now, uh, Biden also announced he's going to help the economy recover from COVID lockdowns this way. It should be a national minimum wage of $15 an hour. No one working 40 hours a week should live below the poverty line. And that's what it means. If you work for less than $15 an hour and work 40 hours a week, you're living in poverty. Uh, small businesses are trying to dig out of a recession. Is this going to work? Uh, for, first of all, that's plainly false, what he just said. Because of the earned income credit and the child tax credit, anyone at the current minimum wage for any family structure is above the poverty line. And you can run the math on that. You can check that. So it is not true that anyone who works full time is below the poverty line in this country already. But of course, you know, the vast majority of minimum wage workers are teenagers or young people who have very limited work experience and want to get that first rung on the economic ladder. And when you essentially say it's illegal for you to work if your work is not worth $15 an hour or more, you're pricing a lot of people out of the labor force, people who need that early work experience so that they can move up that ladder and have more opportunities down the line. And so I think this is of a piece with his expanded unemployment bonuses, paying people not to work. And it is going to be devastating, as, as you uh, pointed out there, for businesses that are trying to get back off the floor from being locked down and shut down uh, if they do have a need for entry level uh, workers. But it won't cost anything, right, Phil, for illegal immigrants to get Obamacare, which they're going to get under the Biden plan as well. They get Obamacare. They get all others. I mean, it's all free. Phil, thanks so much. The